Today's podcast is brought to you by Nature's Best Relief, CBD oil and products. Hey, this is pure high strain hemp. That's what it is. It's what they do. Their products are made from a cannabis compound with significant supplement benefits without the THC that makes you stoned or high. It's just the good stuff. The hemp products help with inflammation, pain, anxiety, psychosis, seizures, spasms, and other conditions. And here's the best news. If you use code word mudflap or remasculate at checkout, you can get 10% off your total bill. That's right. So check out Nature's Best Relief CBD oil and hemp products. They've got capsules, uh, the lotions, cream. Uh, they got all the flavor oils. That's, that's what I've been using. I like the, uh, the cinnamon and the vanilla. But check them out at naturesbestrelief.com. That's naturesbestrelief.com. And use code word mudflap or remasculate and get 10% off your total purchase. Now, let's get on with remasculate. In the basement of the mudflap house, flapping and poo. And they're under with the grains and news. And poo licks itself and flap contemplates manly things. He thinks about guns and trucks and stooges three men and boys and that doesn't sound right. He thinks about boobs and bacon and power tools. Come with me, let your mask you Oh, won't you come with me and remask you everybody. Hair, everybody. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just saying, hi, everybody, and welcome back. It, <laughs> is that how it, the show starts? Isn't, isn't that how it? Uh, uh, you hear people say it now. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome back to the new and improved and hopefully uh, newly high on your list podcast. Uh, it's Remasculate, and we're we had so much fun. With Zoltan last time, we're gonna do it again. We, uh, you guys, I actually had some comments that were like, "This is one of the best you've done in a while." What? Well, well, I thank you. Well, that means it's because of him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's you when you get a when you get a compliment on a, yeah. on a guest that hasn't been on before. <laughs> the best podcast you've ever. Well, and here I thought I was lowering uh, your guys' testosterone yeah, count. Yeah, you sure, sure enough. I thought you were bringing down the standard, but you know, <laughs> no, I'm te- teasing. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. But so, I'm, I'm glad uh, it was all positive. Yeah. So, so wel- welcome back to uh, Remasculate Zoltan. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh, this is take two. We were uh, take two. This is the second chapter. Yeah. The sequel. The sequel. Yeah. Zoltan, yeah. the sequel. Everyone enjoyed Airplane 2 and Grease 2 so much except, better. <laughs> yeah, except the, uh, what was the other one? Hot Shots Part 2. Part 2. Oh, de. I never watched Part 2. You never saw Charlie no, Sheen Hot I Shots I watched the part first Hot de. Shots. Damn it. Well, you know what? There's something for that six-hour flight home tomorrow. There you go. Download yeah. it tonight. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were talking about, we were having coffee, and we were talking about bad shows. Oh. Yeah, and I, I was just, before we started, I was telling you the first, I think it was the first or second cruise ship contract I did. I was doing an adult late night show, and this Australian couple was heckling me, and her titty fell out. Just out. She was it like out of a halter top, a dress, or how does, she was how wearing, does it work out? Yeah, she was, it was like one of those dresses women put on. Uh, like after getting out of the pool. Oh yeah, yeah just yeah, a cover up thing. Yeah, just a cover up yeah. thing. But she wasn't wearing a top underneath that. Oh, so it was barely hanging on. Anyway, you know. And while she was shaking her arm, pointing at me, going, cussing me out, going, "We didn't come to see you anyway." And I'm like, "There's no other show going on. You're right in the front row. Where else would you?" You know, blah blah blah. Her titty falls out, and she was so mad that I could have pointed it out and really embarrassed her. Yeah. But like we were talking about before we recorded. My first couple contracts, You're I was nervous. just afraid of getting fired. Right. Because I had heard so many comics getting fired over such little things. Yeah. And, and even like, though she's heckling you, if you yeah. just said something like that, she could have come back with like how he yeah. sexually harassed me Absolutely. in the showroom or, you know. She's the customer and yeah. I'm just the clown, right? right. So, uh, so I didn't say anything. Instead, I just stared and um, I just stared and... <laughs> 
her titty stayed out for 15 minutes and she eventually <clears throat> calmed down and I was able to do my set but it took all the zing out of every mean thing she was saying because you would just look down and be like yeah 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 I guess so <laughs> none of that hurts my feelings as much but no. yeah that was one of the first ones on a cruise ship that um do you remember whether it was a a good one or a bad one or a a bad titty yeah it was it was not a good titty okay yeah yeah this titty uh and and i love all titties yeah there's very rarely is is there a bad one yeah but it was one of those you're like ooh, yeah okay (laughs) yeah she it was one of those where she's like i don't this won't come out and it did it did it did it nestled its way out there and it was like a periscope coming yeah. out of a submarine, just a little nipple staring at me. And yeah. I was like, oh, there it is. Well, you know, they have cameras in the showroom. They record those shows. Cause, you oh, know. you could probably see that from the angle. Because at the angle she was sitting, uh-huh. only I could see it. Her husband could have seen it, but he was So hammered. drunk anyway. He yeah. was hammered, didn't notice. But no one else in the audience could see it because where they were all sitting, they're all behind her. Yeah. And uh, I could, I was the only so one. So if that's one of those shows they record, because, you know, a lot of this, they show your show during the, the, oh, yeah. the week. Yeah. You Thankfully, know? this was the adult show. Oh, okay. They didn't air. Okay. Oh, man. Could you imagine getting you... cussed out during the family show? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say then? You can't say anything. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your input on my act. I'll take those notes to heart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. Uh, it's Every comic has road stories, horror stories. Bombs. Yeah. Adam bombs. Yeah. I told you the one at the college. Because we talked about colleges. Oh, yeah. yeah. But why, why I don't particularly want to do them, because they do lunchtime shows where people are eating and studying, and you're over, yeah. over in a corner. Yeah. They can, be, they can either be good... But when they're bad, they're like particularly bad. Soul crushingly right. bad. It's not like at a comedy club where sometimes you have great shows and then other times you're like, well, that was an okay show. Right. Mainly at colleges, it's really a home run or a giant. It's one of those like cartoon strikeouts where uh-huh. you do a 360 spin and then woo, 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 woo. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those. You'd screw yourself down. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. All the way down. So I had done. I did it at uh, Washington Jefferson University right outside of Pittsburgh. I show up. It's a small room. There's 10 people. Oh. And small room with 10 people, you can make that show happen. Yeah. But the girl who was in charge at that one goes, let's give it a few more minutes because I think more people are coming. And I go, no, no worries. We wait a few more minutes. No one else shows up and those 10 people left. And she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I guess there's no show. Here's your check. And I go, never apologize for this. This is amazing. It's all right. It's totally fine. I am now going back to the Courtyard Marriott and heading straight for the bar an hour earlier than I thought I would be. So life is not bad. Life is not bad. And she's like, okay. She was like embarrassed, you know. And then the next day, I drive to Harrisburg. I'm at Penn State Harrisburg. And uh, I walk into a similar situation, except this situation is like a cafe with like a study hall. It's, It's not a cafeteria. But that would be a good description yeah. of it. Big room. They got a flyer of my name misspelled. And then <clears throat> there's no one sitting there. Nobody. And I'm like, this is great. I'm going to get another check and go back to the Marriott. The bar's going to be open. We're gonna I'll be there an hour day. early. Another hour early. And the girl in charge of this show just looks at me and goes, well, we paid you. And I just, like, you know what hurt the most is that, I think at the time I was maybe like 26, 27, and she was like maybe 18. Uh-huh. You know, just to have someone that young. Be it. Look, yeah, 10 years younger than you look at you and go, well, we paid you. Get up there and dance. You know, do what yeah, you do. Go, monkey. Yeah. Dance, go. monkey. Exactly. Don't make her shoot at your feet. And uh, so I go up there, and I'm just begging students to come up. Not that there's even that many to choose from. Just come over here and sit yeah. closer. Kick yeah. closer. Come closer. Try to. Yeah. And I got three students to come up. I was like, stop going after your dreams and come listen to me for an hour. <laughs> let's stop going after your dreams. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's make that student debt mean something. Come up here. So uh, I had three students, 15 minutes in, one of them gets up to leave. And they go to the door and there's like these big double doors they are pushing open to leave. Uh-huh. And I go, what was it, the cat jokes? Just trying to say anything. Just to try to, yeah. yeah. Just break say, the tension of somebody yeah. walking out. Anything. And he just looks at me and goes, ugh. I just can't. And he pushed the double doors open and walked out. And he took a piece of my soul with him, like, as he left. And I still had 45 more minutes to do. Oh. So it wasn't like I was almost done. So you were going to ha- end up having to do 45 minutes. On to top of the... Of that. To two people. To two people. Yeah. 
Did but, they stay the entire four? Yeah, they stayed. Days? I think just being uncomfortable. They're like, how could we leave? Did they laugh at all? Did they, they try to? Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh? But the whole time I was just in my head going, man, if I was watching me do this, uh -huh. I wouldn't respect this guy at all. At all. What a piece of crap this guy. Oh, I'd be nice enough to go, dude. We're glad you showed up. Yeah. It's just the two of us. We'll call it quits. Yeah. I would help. I would try to help you out. Yeah. You know, like. Except he, that Nazi that made me go on stage in the back. She didn't even watch the show. She was there with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend was one of those athletes that drinks out of like a gallon of water. Oh, yeah. You know, one of those yeah. guys. Just got drinking, the jug. Yeah. <sighs> the jug of water. Got to stay hydrated. And like, whatever. He, I guess he had like push-ups to go do. So they went and left. And they just left me there. And they came back, like, when I had, like, five minutes left. And then she wouldn't even look at me when she gave me the check. And I just, I was like, ugh. Oh. And then I went back to the Courtyard Marriott and drank more than I did the night before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually uh, turned down the check. Like, you know, gone down and went, really? no, nah, nah, don't do this. Just keep your money. It's not going to work. Like uh, after the show? No, like before the show. Oh, before, before. the show. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this isn't going to work. After the show, you'd be like, you need to double that check for what the hell I yeah. just went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've done that. Like, I, you know, it's not worth it to me. I've told you, just told you right. this, but it's just not, I'm not doing this. You. It's not going to, you're not going to be happy with it. They're not going to be happy with it. You're going to feel you wasted your money. And, and I'm, I'm gonna never going to forget you. it. And I'm never, yeah, yeah. I'm never, this is never going to be out of my head. Dude. Last year, but, I bombed at a car dealership for an hour during the day. You were at the dealership? Yes. They hired you to, like, what, stand in the lobby or something? Yeah, it was an employee appreciation party, and they shut down the dealership at 1 in the afternoon, uh -huh. and they had free barbecue for all the employees, and I had to do an hour of stand-up. And it was a gig I turned down three times, and through my college agent, that's who they reached out to, they kept raising the money. And we then, just want him. Yeah, we want they him. really wanted me. Uh, from the cat jokes, the dry bar thing, yeah. they're like, the guy who was like in charge of booking talent was a fan. Oh, they'll <laughs> love him. Yeah. They'll love him. And I'm like, it's going to be an atom bomb. I'm not doing it. But then when the money gets to like almost double rent, yeah, I'll go. You, you got me. Right. They're, uh, they're like, yeah, he's got to fly to San Francisco. They're like, dude, we'll, we'll take him to the airport after the show. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going. I know it's going to suck. And it was a classic bomb where like before I went up, they had this girl who was missing a kidney and everyone ten, five years ago everyone at the dealership donated like a portion of their paycheck to get this girl whatever organ she needed yeah. and she got it and she had just graduated high school and she got accepted into UCLA she tells a story there's not a dry eye in the house except for mine everyone's crying she gets a standing ovation uh -huh. and like you've heard that as oh, a yeah. comic you've oh, heard yeah. that story a million oh, yeah. times especially so this is, like veterans thing or whatever right, yeah. Yeah. you hear like older comics talk about it and then but you never think you're gonna live that and i'm watch. i'm standing there going this is happening i've seen this I've story seen before i know how this ends this is gonna go bad and then i turn to the guy who books me i'm like i'm about to bomb and he goes oh no you're gonna do great i'm like i guarantee you i'm about to bomb <laughs> and i went up and i ate i ate ass for 60 minutes and while i'm bombing there's car like customers uh -huh. coming up and rattling the doors like what to, to the showroom so like, you, the you know that on? real cars the car salesmen were like They're i right. could be making money instead yeah. of listening to this monkey yes <laughs> and I've, i had to bomb for an hour in front of like a toyota yaris and uh the only laugh i got the entire night was uh the entire day this wasn't even at night the sun god was watching and everybody the only laugh I got was I made a joke about VIN numbers. Because I used to work at the mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. I knew that when you called for a part at a dealership, they don't care the year, make, model. They What's want the, VIN, the number? VIN number. Give me the first date of the VIN. And that was the one laugh I got. And it kind of popped the room. And I, But I, could, I don't have an hour on VIN numbers. Mm -hmm. So I went right back to bombing right after the VIN numbers thing happened. And, oh, it was such death. Well, you may end up having to do that again. With uh, you were telling me last night that you're going to do a cat convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this one you I only have how many cat jokes? <laughs> all the cat <laughs> jokes, all the cat jokes I have, they've seen. Oh, so even I, better. Yeah, so I can't even. I guess I could do those. I'm going to update them or give updates. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But the reason I brought up the car dealership one is because you said. Uh, there's times where I just wanted to give them the check yeah, back. Yeah. Well, while I was bombing, I was in my head going, they're going to complain to my agent. Right. What's my rebuttal going to be? Yeah. And my, I already had a rebuttal in my head before my set was done, and my rebuttal was going to be, have them do the show again. 
hire a different comic. Yeah. I'm going to sit in the back. If he does even slightly better than I did, I'll give double my money back. I will, yeah, yeah, I will pay I them. I want to watch this. Yeah. And, uh, but they didn't complain to my agent, and so I never heard anything of it. But uh, This is sort of the deal. Show. Yeah, yeah I, I did this show once where uh, it was for a bunch of construction workers that had put together a, a building. It was like the building was finished, so they were doing a party for the yeah. construction company. And, and uh, the stage was way like a... a Way across the room, the Dance free liquor, between. the free liquor and food is on the other side. <laughs> There's not even any chairs set up in front of the stage. Oh. And I went, this isn't going to work. You know, yeah. I went to my, this is this isn't going to work. Trust me. You know, they're they're drinking. You got you got a DJ over they're here. Plenty they're plenty of fun. They're fine. She goes, no, no, it'll be great. It'll be great. And I go, it's not going to work. And she's, oh, it'll, you know, it's going to be fine, perfect. You're, you know, you're you're a great comic. I said, well, we watched your stuff. In the right setting. Yeah. Yes. And again, yeah. close to what you said, like a few people wandered up, watched for like a little bit, and walked away. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like you were on display. Like it'd walk up and look at you and then make the circle back to the drinks and food. Might as well have been making anim- balloon animals. And balloon animals, yeah. yeah. So when I when I go back in to, to get paid at the end, at the, and uh, the lady signs the check and flips it at me. Oh. Like flips it. And I just went, I told you. Yeah. And walked out. Like, don't be mad at me because yeah, I'm, you're, you're, you're just wrote a big check because I told you to keep it. Yeah, I told you it was going to go bad. But comedy is not music. All right, com- there's so many things that it takes for a comedy show to go well as far as just setting. Sound, sight. Yeah. Set it up. to be dark, can't have a bunch of distractions. Yeah. Low ceilings. I mean, there's so many things. That's why the comedy club on this ship is cool. Right. Because... Even though everyone's on vacation, we might get uh, a crowd of sunburnt people that have seen a lot that day. At least it's a small, tight... And people laugh impact. more in the dark. Absolutely. They're not as self-conscious. Absolutely. They're like, oh, they're going to see me laugh at that. Especially or, at a company setting when everyone knows everybody. Yeah. You definitely need it dark. Right. Because they can't have HR looking over going, you laughed at that joke? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they can't have that. I was very offended that uh, Zoltan laughed at the joke about... You know, right, whatever that running over yeah. a cat, yeah, how dare he? So, all those bomb stories like they, they just think because they watch us on YouTube do a great set in a great venue, you know, yeah. probably the tape was at a comedy club, and they're like, oh, they'll do great in this dealership on the showroom, yeah. Did they have the chairs day. or were they just standing yeah, around like, leaning on cars? <laughs> They had chairs, but everyone was sitting with their section. So one side I had a group of mechanics. This side I had like all the owners from all the dealerships, and then over here I had like the salesmen uh-huh. and the uh, like finance people. Yeah. So there's like office workers, salesmen, owners, mechanics. So they broke up into their own yeah, yeah. groups. They segregated themselves. They segregated yeah, themselves. Yeah. And I get that. I would. I worked in those settings before, like when you work in a warehouse, but there's office people. Yeah. You don't sit with those. Those uh, white those. collars, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keyboard punchers, no. You sit with uh, you sit with the guys in the jumpsuits. So I would sit with the guys with the jumpsuits. I get all that, but it was so interesting that like any time I would get a hint of a laugh, it was never the whole room. <laughs> it was like, oh, that <laughs> popped the salespeople, <laughs> that got the mechanics. But I also I, I opened, it never jailed. No. It never came to. I also opened my set wrong. Oh, I thought it would be great. To look at him and go, hey, it's just us. Be straight with me. Leasing is a sucker's game, right? That's how I hope. Because I thought, look, there's he's, no he's cu- an insider. There's yeah, no customers. Listen, We're fine. There's no customers. Here. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Gets the attitude. No, it's not. Yeah, because my ex leased a car. And it's got, a scam. It's yeah. So I because I, I did the calculations. Yeah. Well, I'm like, so we're paying ten thousand dollars for three years for a car we don't own, and we can only drive so many miles, and we're responsible yeah. for it. And if I get uh, a stain on the seat, I yeah, gotta... yeah, we're responsible for yeah. it. Yeah. And then they're like, well, that's, you're looking at it the wrong way. We cover all the maintenance. I'm like, there's no maintenance on a car in the first three years. All the stuff that I know from working at a mechanic shop. And then I now I'm a, a, a jerk, you know, in that situation. But now I brought this up at the dealership thinking it's just us. Yeah. And they're like, they stared at me. They're like, how dare you? And I was like, well, we're off to a rousing start. <laughs> I, tried to take, I tried to take a chance because I'm going up after the crying girl with the new yeah. organ. Well, you, at least you didn't do that. You know, oh. how, about, how about a hand for... Uh, yeah, yeah. How about a hand How for about her? I have a missing new liver? You know? <laughs> how about a hand for her? Maybe she'll need that. We'll need that next she... time. <laughs> Oh, so many things they set up, set us up with that are just like, what were you thinking? 
What is your worst? Uh, uh, we all have had horrible road stories. What yeah. is your What is your worst? Because I know. Yeah. I heard you tell it. You You have bust yourself to places. Oh, I yeah, have yeah. never. Never. Taken, I have never been. Like, I think I'll take a greyhound to a gig. I did that in from Portland to Medford. You ever work for Pat Wilson? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she books a lot of well-paying one-nighters yeah. up in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and uh, so one night I did Portland, and the next night I had to be in Medford, which is in the southern part of the state. And I didn't want to rent a car, and I was like, "Oh, I'll just Greyhound." I've never done a Greyhound. Let's do a Greyhound. And uh, the first stop south of Portland is Willamette, or Will, however you pronounce it, and it's in front of the prison. Like right there. Yeah. Like they like, pick up the people that just got released that we, afternoon with a new suit and five hundred dollars. Yes. And I'm not talking about jail. I'm not talking about a couple guys that got busted. I'm talking prison. Yeah. You got sentenced to something. Two prisoners come on with their bags of cl- they have clear bags of yeah, their belongings. With their got your stuff back. Yeah. And they're proud of being prisoners. They start. They sit right in front of me, and they're hitting on this girl across the aisle. Like, we just got out of prison. Like, that's their opening line. And... Ooh, take me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just sat behind them, and I'm terrified. I'm like, they're going to know I have an iPad. They're like, they're just like... I'm like, well, they're going to steal stuff. my stuff. <laughs> terrified. And uh, that was actually... I rode on a Greyhound maybe one more time after that. Yeah. And that was about it. When that one creepy guy circled me and yeah, that, that was a story I was wanting you to. Yeah, so yeah. So what, yeah. what happened there? You were you were was, filming or something, right? I was filming like my little travels on my phone, and then there was a guy who looked like a cross between like the Unabomber and a pedophile. Like he had those pedophile glasses, uh-huh. kind of like comb over kind of hairdo, and he was just circling me, like not tight circles, but like maybe twenty yard circles. You could tell he was circling you. Yeah, there was only me and him at the bus stop. Oh, that makes it easier. There's only him and you. It was just me and him at the bus stop. Nothing's open, and he's just circling me. So you just see this, like, pedophile in the background of my video circling me. And then I got to a point where I took a picture with him, and I I put a post on Facebook. Did he show up in the picture? Yeah, he showed up in the picture. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, if he didn't. He didn't take a picture, and he wasn't in it. Oh, that would have left. I would have left. Yeah. But yeah, I posted. I go if uh, if I should go up missing. Uh, this is the suspect. <laughs> Look for whoever this is. But yeah, so many creeps out there, man. It's just uh, I don't I don't like. How do we get into this stuff? It, I don't know. Like I got booked in Montana by Crank Williams. I was half telling you that story. Yeah, Crank Crank sounds like the name of uh, of your guy that just got out of prison. Yeah. And this guy, I'm Crank. I just got out of prison. This is my clear bag. <laughs> you you want some you want some of this? This whole gig, my buddy Bijan set up. So there's four of us flying out to Billings, Montana to do a show, and he's buying our flights. And for seven extra dollars he could have got us a flight with one stop. Ooh, seven dollars. Saving seven dollars. Yeah, he saved seven bucks, so instead of flying San Diego, Denver to Billings, we went San Diego, San Francisco, Denver, Billings. Oh. And we hit weather in San Francisco, so when we landed in Denver we missed our flight and we had a ten hour uh, wait for the apparently they're not running a lot of flights to Billings. No. Like if you miss one No, that's why yeah. I, was it a prop plane too? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Tiny little prop plane. Yeah. They're like, oh the next one's in ten hours. Yeah. And I were like, crap. So we had to wait. And that was the first Billings was the first airport I landed in where there weren't any cabs. I've been to a lot of airports. There's always cabs out front and there's nothing. So I had to call Yellow Cab and they're like, Yeah, where were you picking up from? I'm like, the airport, why aren't you here? Like <laughs> <laughs> this is why aren't there a line of you? So uh, a cab shows up. It's like one of those old cop cars, you know? And my buddy and I, we sit in the back. And then she's not leaving. And I'm like, oh, can you take us to the Dino Brewery or wherever this show is? And she's like, yeah, yeah, we're waiting for two more people. And I was like, what? This just turned into an Uber pool. We picked up two more people jump in. we got to drop them off at their house. Before you can go Before to a gig. Before we can go to a gig. We're many hours late for it. <laughs> we, we show up to the gig. It's horrible. There's like nobody there. And that's where I first meet Crank Williams. Now, apparently, his shows used to be really well run. But whoever his business partner was uh-huh. had recently died. And so he was heartbroken about that. And he was drinking heavily. And he's one of these guys that's like a big talker. He's six foot four, but he tells you he's six seven. Yeah. I have a buddy who's six four. I know what six four looks like. He's like, yeah, I'm six seven. And he was telling us, like, if you can't do a three hour set, you're not a real comedian. 
And I was like, who the hell's doing three hour sets? And he goes, I opened for the Wu Tang Clan and I yelled the N word. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's just one of these big talkers. He's like, yeah, I got a girlfriend, but we got an open relationship. If you can't have sex for 72 hours straight, you're not a real man. And I'm like, who is this guy? This guy's a nut. Nut? Yeah. In the set. Yeah. Like, just. I'd be happy with 72 seconds. What do you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Three and a half pumps. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, they get more pumps than us at Starbucks. <laughs> right. You, you, what are you pumping the air or are you actually in there? So. He's, I'm like, who is this guy? And he tells us he got his name Crank from making meth for like a local motorcycle gang. And he said it like like the prisoners we picked up outside of Portland, where they're like proud of it. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, shouldn't you be ashamed? And they're mm-hmm. like, no, no, isn't that great? So then we go to his house, which is 45 minutes outside of Billings. It's a cabin. It's a nice cabin with a ranch. Apparently it belongs to his girlfriend. We don't meet that night. We stay at the bottom. Because they have an open relationship. It, this open I'm doing air quotes this open, open relationship, relationship. Yeah. we go to sleep and all night he's telling us hey tomorrow I'm going to take you to this place they got big pancakes size of your face it's going to be delicious I'm like whatever and we all go to sleep and the next morning we wake up and uh, Crank and one of the comedians is gone this guy Richard and I asked my buddy I go where did they go and he goes oh Crank uh, Crank and Richard went to go uh, scrap some metal so he could pay Richard and I'm like, well, that's not a good sign. He was going to have to go. He went and took a trailer of scrap metal to the yard so he could get money to pay He paid the comic. And I'm like, well, what about us? And I go, he goes, it's not looking good. And I'm like, yeah. And now I'm like, oh. what the hell? Yeah. And on top of that, I'm starving and they're taking forever. And the only thing there is to eat is a pot brownie that my buddy Bijan had <laughs> smuggled in from San Diego. And so we're nibbling on that just out of hunger, you know. So now we're getting high. And then we get a phone call from Richard. They're on their way back from the scrapyard. And they go, he goes, hey, do you guys see Crank's phone down there in the living room? And we're looking around like, no. And he goes, damn, man, that means it's up in the bedroom with his girlfriend. And I go, well, why is that a problem? They're in this open, open I'm going to air quote it yeah. for you. Open, open relationship. relationship. Apparently she didn't know. Mrs. Crank. Oh, that's never really yeah. good, is Mrs. it? Mrs. Crank never knew about this open relationship. So the other comic was like, I think you guys should pack your stuff. And if you guys could pack mine, that'd be awesome. So we're like, now we're high and packing our stuff. We're like, we got to get out of here. And then we, we, as we're getting out of the cabin, we see the truck pull up. Coming up this long dirt road with all the smoke building. It's like a scene out of a movie. Yeah. And cr- parks, crank, gets out, and he, like, stomps into the house like he's ready for a fight. Six, seven. Yeah. Just six, evil testosterone. Yeah. And then as he's walking in, I'm high, and I'm, I'm just like, hey, are we still getting those pancakes? <laughs> like, as he's walking. He just he walks past you. Yeah. He walks past me and into the house. And my buddy Bijan was late scrambling because he was also packing Richard's stuff. And he comes out of the house, and he goes, dude, I think he hit her. He, I go, what are you talking about? He goes, I heard a big... I think he hit her. They were arguing, and a big smack. I think I think Crank punched him. Oh, punched his back. Crap. And I'm like, oh my god, should we do something? And then just as we're like deciding that, here comes Crank stumbling out of his house, and his nose is pouring blood. <gasps> she got she, she hit got, him. Yeah. Oh. And he and he's selling it like Ric Flair. He's like shaking his head. His hair's all over the place. There's blood flying, and he's, he's like, I think she broke my nose. I think she broke my nose. And he wanders off down the hill. And we're like, oh, my God. And we're trying not to laugh because we're high. And then Mrs. <laughs> Crank comes out storming out of the cabin. Uh-huh. Now, we haven't met her yet. And I'm not saying she's she wasn't a, a fat woman, uh-huh. but she was a hoss, I would call she her. She was a larger. She was. You could put a plow to her. You big know? boned. And yeah, big, like, country, raw yeah. bone woman. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fight her. You're right. And she comes out, and she hops in Crank's truck, does a U-turn with the trailer whipping in the background, chases him down the hill, cuts him off, and then she jumps out, starts cussing him out, and we can't hear her because it's down the hill. She's cussing him out, and Crank likes trying to get away, and he's uh-huh. he has everywhere to run. We're in the it's middle wide of open spaces, he, but he's it's almost like when he you can't see get someone, around her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, trying to like run away from a zombie in a zombie movie. Yeah, he he tripped over a shrub and fell down. <laughs> No, we're dying laughing up there. My buddy Bijan's high. He's like pantomiming how he fell. Did you see that? Look at we. 
<laughs> so he was playing one on one basketball and tripped over his own ankles. And she's cussing him out, and then I'm like, dude, we should stop laughing because she's pissed. What do you have? What she yeah. turns? What if the you know right. turn? And you, yeah, you know. And and just as you would expect, there are guns everywhere. Like e- the uh, every wall of the cabin downstairs has like uh, uh, like hunting rifles yeah. everywhere. So I'm afraid she's gonna kill. You this run guy. up there and grab a gun or yeah. pull one out of the truck. Right. You know? She's gonna kill this guy and then kill us. And then you're never gonna have a ride. <laughs> well, I was scared she was going to kill us because witnesses. Right? Yeah. Oh, now I got to kill you yeah. too. Yeah. That's how movies go, you right? know. Right. And then she comes back. The crank disappears. She comes back up and she goes, "Hey, I know we didn't meet, but I'm sorry. I can't let anyone cheat on me." And we're like, "Oh, that's all right. That's we totally get you." And she's like, "Listen, you guys are still welcome to stay here." And we're like, "Oh, we already packed our bags. You know, we're all set." And she goes, "Well, all right. I'll give you a ride into town." So now, with this jilted lover, we have a 45-minute ride back into Billings, trying to make small... We've made our buddy Josh sit up front, and we're kicking him to make small talk. Yeah. So he's over there like, oh, the foliage is nice this time. You just tried to say it. Did y'all talk about anything about the... No. Nothing? You bring it up? You no. didn't go, hey, I it, she, saw his nose. Nice punch. Yeah. You no, didn't she, say any... Ca- ca- no. She's seething. And we're just like, oh, God, don't kill us. Just take us to this hotel. And... Drops us off at the hotel. Now we don't know if there's a show that night. We don't have communication with Crank, you know, because she, like, smashed his phone or whatever the hell. And we just show up to the venue that night. Yeah. And there's Crank sitting at the bar. Uh Uh-huh. And he's wearing an eye patch. Because apparently she punched him in the eye so hard that his nose started bleeding. Uh (laughs) So it wasn't his nose. He didn't get hit in the nose. He got hit in the eye. But it broke a vessel or something. Yeah, and it came pouring out of his nose, which I'd never even seen before. And... He's wearing an eye patch, but it's like an eye patch that you wouldn't get at a doctor's office. Like you just went and got one at Walgreens you or CVS. Like a damn pirate! It, it might have well had. It might have had a skull on it. Did you look closer? <laughs> it looked like he went to Party City and got a damn eye patch. <laughs> I went to Party City. I need. I'm gonna need an eye patch. And he flipped it up, and his eyes all swollen and mm. disgusting. And he's all messed up. He'd been drinking for a while, and I think they gave him like a pain pill or something at the thing. And he's all slurring his words. He's wearing a bloody T-shirt. And he's like, hey, were you guys worried about me? I didn't get any calls from you. And I'm like, you don't have a phone. Like, what did you think was going to happen? He goes, oh, he's rambling. He's like, well, we're going to go do a show tonight. And another bad turnout, like maybe 10 people there. Yeah. And he goes up and does a set. He bombs for about In his eye patch. In In his his pirate party city eye patch. Not only an eye patch, he has a knee brace on the outside of his jeans. Because he fell over that bush. Yeah, he (laughs) fell over a bush, so he got like an ace sleeve knee brace thing over the outside of his jeans put it under your jeans yeah. no put it on the outside like a real jackass so he's up there with an eye patch an ace sleeve he bombs for eight minutes and then gets off stage and that's when I turn to Bijan and I go I think he thinks that was three hours <laughs> that must have been his three hours three hours that, well that helps with the 72 hours of sex too yeah. doesn't it I think it narrows you have to like you have to shave all those down. Yeah, you have to. You have to do the uh, bell curve, the the, the, exactly. the the crank bell curve. Exactly. So then we go up. We, you know, we have our whatever sets, and then we realize Crank's not going to pay us. He paid the other comic because he was able to sell scrap metal, but he doesn't have money for us. But what he does have is an open bar. So we ended up drinking our payments on his open bar. My buddy was giving shots away to women. He did, we were drinking, we got hammered. And then when the tab came, like the bartender was like, hey, where the hell's Crank? We got a $2,000 bar tab here. Are you and serious? He disappeared. We gave a lot of drinks away. We were pissed. He flew us out, he promised us money, he disappears. So we gave, we had to go and buy a hotel now. You know, yeah. We did pay for our flights, but we're not yeah. getting money. We had to go buy a hotel. Did you ever hear from Crank again? Did you? My buddy still talked to him. I never heard from him again. We gave away free drinks afterwards. We went back to the hotel, and then the next day we went to the airport, and I never heard from him again. Because, I mean, did he, did he like, $2,000? Nobody didn't call you up. I'm like, I think he understood. Because he's like, because I, I forget what he owed us. I think he owed us each under a thousand i think i was supposed to get paid like 700 and so was beige and so was the other guy so that's around about the right amount yeah so we tried we couldn't drink two thousand dollars worth because it's billings like the drinks were like four dollars so we like had to give a bunch of drinks away and we're drinking ourselves into a bolivian to try to get to this marker <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna get our money from this guy one way or another 
But that's like a story that I would love to do a short movie about. Yeah, I can see it. Just called Crank. Yeah, called Crank. Crank. Yeah, just a comics on a, a little road trip that goes yeah. bad near a cab the cabin in the woods and the, you're terrified. The guns and right. the you know there's ways to zoom like you're thinking of it. Zoom in on a gun and you're high. High. You're high. You're hungry. And you can make the film kind of. Ooh. <laughs> you can have so much fun with it. I, the uh, that's one of the, that's a that's a Rob Zombie film. Mm-hmm. That is a. It really is. Yeah. Oh, and the other. There's so many facets to the story. Like I remember the headliner we were working with. I'm not going to give his full name out because I don't want to. Uh, he he uh, he was uh, he picked up a girl. Like he was a little older than us, and he picked up a girl at the show. And this girl was not something you should be bragging about picking up. Uh-huh. But the next morning at breakfast, he goes, "Man, you see that girl I went home with?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we." Look like Crank's old lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's a hoss. You know. But he was real proud of it. Like, yeah, we got us a ride to the airport. So that's, that's who gave us a ride to the airport was this woman that this comic hooked up with that he shouldn't have been proud of. But <laughs> that's that's the billing story. That's a story that I'm really glad I survived. That's one of those stories that uh, uh, that they do with like at the moth, you know, where, oh, those, yeah, where yeah, they yeah. where people come up and tell a. St- yeah, a story. It's not necessarily like a hilarious routine all or the joke. way. Yeah, yeah. It's not a routine. It's a. This it's is a my. Story. This is yeah. the story. Yeah, it's definitely moth. This is the, the billing story. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tell that at a car dealership. Absolutely, boy. That. <clears throat> hey, you think this show sucks? Let me. T- <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about billings. Now that I'm out of VIN number jokes. <laughs> this, with the. Uh, did you ever get that book? It was a compilation of road stories from comedians. And I think it came out about 10 years ago. But it was a lot of comics, I think, that came up in your class, yeah. probably. Like, probably have seen it or heard yeah. about it. But they had so like... many good stories in there. Like comics that were like shady bookers tried to pay them with... Oh, you Coke. Can... Yeah, Coke, or you yeah. can sleep with this waitress. Right. And this comic got offended. I would, how dare you try to pawn that off on me? And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. And he goes, needless to say, I was banging that waitress all weekend anyway. So what's the difference? You know? like So it's so many good... So if you're looking for a oh, book yeah. of great comic road stories, look that one up. I don't remember the title, but I'm sure if you just... Comic, comic road, road sto- stories. Yeah, it, it'll pop right up. Yeah. yeah. I had always wanted to do... A, um, Road stories for bands, and I, I. Oh God! But I heard that uh, the guy that did Mike Judge is doing that recently now. Mike Judge is doing that, yeah. like for a movie or something. S- uh, something like that, yeah. Because I, I, God, I love. I had worked, you know, with Dolly Parton and some of these other bands, oh. and I'd sit around with their guys, and they would tell these bus stories. Like, oh, one time we we're so drunk, we, he peed on the guy in the bump bunk because right. he thought it was the bathroom. You know, like. <laughs> There's there's a lot more stories. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. I love all the and stories. And I love to just do a yeah yeah like a, if they did a collection like that. Yeah. I love I love all the stories where like a girl gets on the bus and they forget to drop her off and then she ends up like ten hours away from Through home. A city. Now. Like, yeah. I was hanging out with this band in Seattle and they they had a situation like that and the guy that she ended up hooking up with was like nice but not. He he goes he goes. I'm really sorry. Yeah, you're gonna have to take a train, but I, I I'd love to pay for your train ride. Just uh, invoice me. <laughs> he said invoice invoice me and gave him his email address to like recoup some thirty dollar train. T- and I go, you said invoice me after this woman had sex with you on this gross tour bus. <laughs> invoice me. Well, I love that. So there's I'm sure bands have even you know. Their stories probably stories. pale in comparison to yeah. comedian stories. Yeah. Oh, I I remember uh, one of the one of the stories, and I won't again won't name names. Of course. But uh, they'll they'll know who they are if they ever hear this. Sure. The guys were drunk and dancing with each other. <laughs> Good, like they love this song. Yeah. And they're like drunk, you know. <laughs> and one of the other guys starts to get. Weepy and leaves the room. Oh no! <laughs> and was upset that he didn't ask him to to dance. Oh my like, god! I, That's it, hilarious. Yeah, like was there's not like a connection. They're not. They're not. You know, they're just guys with wives. But for whatever reason, it touched him. Like. Why didn't he ask me to? Do? That's when you know you're drunk when you're oh, at, yeah. when your emotions are can't control. Yeah, you your can't control your actual. Uh, you I, know, I thought we were. I was your best friend. 
I cried at my bachelor party. I don't think anyone caught it. But I got weepy-eyed at my bachelor party that I was hammered and I was looking at this group of dudes that my buddies. Yeah. And I'm like, man, they all came together. They They're do care busy. about me. And they came together and it's so high. I'm like, weepy-eyed. I was like, oh, shit. So I like dried that up. <laughs> but I, I totally get that. But that's like that scene. You ever watch Almost Famous? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember the plane scene? It's going to crash. Oh, yeah. And they start telling all the... Yeah, yeah. and then the guy in the back, I'm gay! Yeah, and then <laughs> the plane settles, and he's just, damn it. <laughs> he wasn't ready to come out. He just thought he was going to die. <laughs> They're telling their secrets. Yeah. They're confessing all their, like, all their stories and everything. Oh, that's... This is the best. Yeah. That, was that one of your favorite movies? What is your favorite movie? I oh. like The Big Lebowski. Oh, really? Are you a big... I no, I like it. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge uh, uh, Coen Brothers, Coen Brothers yeah. fan, yeah. but to me that was one of the ones that I did not strike. Oh, that wasn't one that connected with you? Yeah, but okay. I know it does with everybody, a yeah, lot a, a lot of people, yeah. but it was trippy. It yeah. was kind of, I guess I was more used to like a deeper kind of, you know, yeah. and not like musical numbers with, fly, with flying bowling balls and pins. Every and, time know. he got knocked out. There would be like a musical number. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, my favorite movies are the ones you go back and you find new things to laugh at because you were laughing so hard at another you miss scene. Something. You yeah. miss something. Yeah. Like uh, I was watching The Great Outdoors. Like, I got like eighties, like John Hughes style yeah. comedies. Uh, the, I was watching The Great Outdoors with Dan Aykroyd, who I love, and John Candy. Yeah, and that was a good that, one. Yeah, there's that scene where they got to get the bat out of the cabin, and I laughed so hard in that that I missed certain things. So there's one of the times they miss him, but John Candy takes like a broomstick to the face. Yeah. He's like, ah, so I'm laughing at that. And then they're like, where is he? And Dan Aykroyd goes, oh, he must be up in the rafters refueling. And the way he hits that line with his shit. Refuel? <laughs> Refuel with this bat like it's a fighter. It's a jet now. <laughs> That, the way he hit that line with his Chicago accent, I just started laughing. I'm like, how have I missed that line? Because I've watched this movie a million times. Yeah. But I, I do. So I like movies like that, where you laugh so hard you miss certain lines, and you go back and you watch it like a hundred times, you know? Yeah. I'm, uh, what about you? Favorite movie? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm a movie guy. I love movies. I don't... But are you There's, a guy that will like uh, rewatch movies multiple times? No. Okay. I, I'm not, because that's why I've never understood why people buy movies. Right. You know, like, oh, I bought that DVD because I loved the movie. Oh, I How many that. times are you going to watch it? Yeah, well, I'm one of those freaks that I will re- I'll wear that DVD. Really? Thing. I like having, I like knowing, like, when things are coming up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this thing. Now, I don't do that with all movies I like. But I own Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. My mom and my brother and I, we watch that every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. Uh, Big Lebowski, absolutely. And, you know, stuff like any John Candy or Chris Farley movie. I guess I would be... Uh, Oh, I can't, shouldn't you say this on Remasculate? <laughs> Love Actually. I like the movie Love Actually. I, I've seen that. What, uh, who's in that? Liam Neeson, and, and there's a whole, it's a bunch of people. I, I mean, remember uh, liking that movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's a, it's a rom-com, basically. There's but some it's, good ones. It, it's a British rom-com. Yeah. But that's just, it's one of those that if it's on, oh, it's on! Yeah. You know, I'll watch it from whatever point it starts, yeah. but, but I don't own it. But it's right. one of those movies that I'm like, oh. Well, there's there's certain movies that are like Bull Durham, you know, it's such a uh, it's always put up there as one of the great baseball movies. Mm-hmm. It's actually a romantic rom com. Yeah. yeah, it's really about a baseball player who's at the end of his run and this and old owner. whore. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you can't say that anymore. This old woman, this <laughs> woman that has. Sex. Did you say whore? Yeah, you can't say that anymore. Why can't you say whore anymore? I don't. know. I was just in Portland. Is that is that, that slut shaming? Well, you can't uh, you can't do. Um, like prostitutes, not the word anymore. It's now sex worker. What is it? sex worker? Yeah, which I don't mind because I think it's the same number of syllables. I'm I'm big on whatever word flows the best because we do comedy, we You're talk, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So like, I don't like words with too many syllables because it's too many to hit, and it doesn't work in a joke. Prostitute, so, prostitute, sex worker. It might be even less syllables. Prostitute, prostitute. Is it four, three. What do we get? Three, three. Okay. Prostitute, sex. Sex work work-er. her. So the same number of syllables. Yeah. It's two words, though. Yeah, but certain words are funny. Certain yeah. words make things funnier. Like, you know? I don't think the word whore is funny, but I do think the pronunciation whore is hilarious. Or if you say it, whore! Yeah. 
her. <laughs> you know, you got to say it. You yeah, can't just yeah. be like, she's a whore. Yeah. That's, but, but if she's a whore, yeah. you gonna... If you say it with a certain accent, I think it's funny. That's, a, that's the only reason. You know who doesn't like to be sh- slut-shamed? Who? Sluts. I find that odd. You know what I mean? Because you choose to be what you... Well, I don't think... The reason I'm... A, see, oh, you, I'm you a, and all serious. I saw your face turn serious. Well, because I'm a single man. Yeah. And I don't... Uh, you don't want to... Discriminate. I don't want to dissuade them <clears throat> from uh, sleeping with me. Yeah. I, I, you know? Yeah. I've been single for two years now since my separation. And I've been kind of a whore. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> yeah. And so, like, who am I to judge? I, I always wondered why that worked that way. Like, we were allowed to, but they weren't. I think because nothing's going in us. Is that the difference? I, I think we're so. We're going in. I and think so, but they're the more of the... I was always raised that women are the keeper of the virtue. They're the... They are. They're the ones you put on a pedestal. That they are... Okay. That they and are... We're pigs. We're pigs. Men right. are pigs. And yeah. you'll, you, would, you would hunt mud if you had a chance, you know. And that, yeah. You know, and that they're supposed to be... The, you have to be invited in. Sure. You know what I mean? And other than that, then it's... It, you know, assault. Yeah. So you, that's the way it's always been, that you, that's yours. You're the temple of goodness, you oh. know. But all of a sudden you're like, well, just come here and wreck the temple. Just come, come toss the pews and knock over the idols. You know. Those are the girls I like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want a bunch of running around. I'm not going to chase you. Come on, man. I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> You're looking for a church with the door open. That's yeah. what you're... A temple with the with I, the I like, bridge lowered. I, I like... Uh, I don't know. I, I really like people with a story. You know? And I'm not... Uh, the I, checkered story or just a... That's more interesting. You know? When people are like... So you're looking for damage. Yeah. Something with a little bit of yeah. damage to it, but I, not... It's more interesting. Are you a fixer? Hmm. I am a... Uh, they, I think I gravitate... And they gravitate to me because I'm very positive. Because uh-huh. my mom's that way. Because you could give her any sh- dog shit story that you have, huh? and she goes, "Yeah, but you ever look at it this way? What about this?" And you're like, "Oh," nah, nah. and I yeah. kind that kind of rubbed off on me. Yeah. So I'm kind of like this optimist. So you can tell me, you know, there's this girl I've been hanging out with. She's going going through a rough time, and I'd be like, "Yeah, but how about this, this, and this?" And she's like, "Oh, that's pretty nice." And so I think they like that. You know, like, yeah. I'm not all doom and gloom. But yeah, she's been to prison. She yeah. uh, she tried to poison her last boyfriend, but she really likes you. Right. Well, like, <laughs> I've been having this. So I'm 32. So a lot of uh, a lot of people I went to school with, they're pretty settled in a career. Uh huh. And I get I, I, when I hang out with them, they're jealous of what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and you're I'm, jealous of what I'm jealous of what they have. You and have a home and a beautiful yeah, yard and a, and a partner yeah, and kids. You got kids, isn't that cool? And you have a steady. You're not going to get well, tired tomorrow. I would give this tomorrow. all up if I could be on the road like sure. you. Sure. And and that a lot of times that's what I say to these people that are going through tough times. I go, they go. Oh, I wish I was doing what you're doing. I go. They. I wish I was doing that. Grass is always greener on the other side. Always. No it's like when you meet a, meet a band. A band will say, oh, I wish I've always wanted to be a stand-up comic. You're like, right. God, I would love to be oh, love to, to be play, in front, guitar. play guitar in front of a yeah. stadium. Play yeah. like Slash? <laughs> yeah. I would give up all a stand-up to be a, have that. Yeah, everybody yeah. wants the other. Yeah. Curly hair people want Absolutely. straight hair. Straight hair people Absolutely. want. Absolutely. And I think we lose track of that. And we always focus on whatever is keeping us busy and down yeah and uh yeah but i if you talk to someone that's just well adjusted like i've dated some girls that are just well adjusted and have a good job and don't have any issues and they like high-end tequila and you know wow it's uh it's happy hour you want to go down to miguel juniors and go to happy hour and i'm like maybe have a testata can we bring a gun i'd like to blow my brains out really yeah you don't like that stability no i need a little bit of I need a little recklessness. Drama. Because I'm very straight and narrow. I always have my, um, I always have a strong inner conscience of like, you need to do this. Like, I'm a big money saver. Uh-huh. I, have, I have a good amount of money in the bank. I'm very responsible. So, I don't want to hang out with someone else that's responsible. It's boring. That's like me. I want someone who's like, I'm down to my last hundred bucks. And I'm like, you know what? So we're going to minor league hockey. It's two dollar Bud Light night. I get the tickets. You get the two dollar Bud Lights. Let's go have an. So you are looking for damage. Yeah. You are looking for slightly just. Yeah. Uh, 
Because then but, what's the point of being optimistic to someone that's But just you like, know those people won't stay long in I, your life. I kind of like that right now. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not, because I was the last one I was with, I was with for seven years, and I'm kind of anti-relationship right now. I'm a little scared of getting back into what I used to. Do you tell that? Do you use that story? You know, cause seven years, I've had my heart broke. I'm not really ready. I do, but oh I mean God. it genuinely. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean it genuinely. You're yeah, not just yeah, using yeah. it I'm as your... I'm not using it as, as, the, as the, yeah. the, 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 the tongue in a, in a no. snapping turtle to lure in No, the, it's not okay. a lure. It's a, it's, <laughs> I'm being dead honest. I go, hey, listen, if you're like really dead set on a relationship, I'm probably not the one... Or you should, we should hang out maybe a year from now. Maybe I'll feel different. Oh, I've never had a regular relationship. I've yeah. tried to kill every boyfriend I've ever had. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's wrong. But uh, when I was going through my breakup, I, I read a bunch of Bukowski. You, you ever read mm -hmm. Bukowski? So I don't know who that is. He's a famous poet, but he also wrote a bunch of novels. And that's what I got into. I got into his novels. And uh, I gravitated to him because he writes like a comedian. There's no fat on his writing. You know how some novels there's like six paragraphs on the setting? Yeah. No. The room was a dark room. room. The wallpaper yeah. was a light blue. Is the, is the light shown across the... Yeah, Bukowski, yeah. none of that crap. Who, what, where, when, why, boom. And he's got a great story. He always wanted to be a writer, but he didn't start really getting after it until he was 50. He had worked for the post office. Uh -huh. He had a pension coming up. He walked away from all of that. I'm going to go be a writer. Everyone thought he was crazy. And he is, but, you know, he made it. And uh, I fell in love with his writing, and he would hang out with these broken people. And he was a broken person. He was a big alcoholic. I'm not much of a drinker. But, I don't know, I gravitated toward that, like, romantic side of just, like, being on the fringes, being this yeah. quote-unquote artist, and uh, hanging out with these broken yet interesting people. I dig that. There is a thing about broken people and broken artists that people think they're supposed to be. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. you're supposed to be like... And I know, know I'm not broken. I'm pretty like put together mentally and I have a strong constitution of like what's right and wrong. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying about the artists themselves. Sure, like, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, they're, they're supposed, like, to, supposed be, to be like, you're supposed to be like just grungy and yeah, yeah. and smoking and, and I'm barely getting by. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I'll drink maybe it, once a week and I read a lot. I'm really yeah. nerdy. Like that's what I'm into. But I like hanging out with people that have a story. I like listening to stories. There's no story to, oh, yeah, I got this really good job. and So that, when it comes to stories, now, is there a podcast that is your kind of story? Like, my, my wife is now in, into the crime stories, the oh, murder yeah. podcast. I those, like those. I get caught the, up in those, absolutely. So, so is there one that you like or would recommend to a listener? I like the, uh, This American Life makes good podcasts. Like, they'll tell you a story about something... Wait, if, if you if you heard the subject of it, uh -huh. you'd be like, oh, I'm going shut up. And sounds, then you this listen, sounds boring. Yeah, and then you listen to the story, like, oh, that's fascinating. Oh, we were talking about this the other day when I told you that one reporter got locked in the closet trying to do voice. Oh, yeah, work. yeah. So they had three stories of being people getting locked into things. And and, a, just, yeah. uh, uh, I'll tell this, for, uh, well, I'll get you to tell. A reporter was doing a voiceover yeah, recording, we, and she went into her closet to do it at a hotel. Yeah, for good acoustics. For good acoustics, and she accidentally locked herself yeah. in the closet. That's and she the, left. Yeah, and she left the recorder on, and she was stuck in there for a couple hours, yeah. and she had to bang on the wall, and finally someone came to help her. And then the next story was about a cop who accidentally locked himself in a squad car. And, yeah, because he, he, he was on a shift, and uh -huh. his partner was on a thing, and he's like, I'm going to go take a nap in the, the back of the squad car. Yeah. Well, the back locks. You can't get out of the back. That's where you put, like, people you're taking oh, to jail. Oh, that's right. And he accidentally locked, locked himself. Locked himself in the cage area. Yeah. Yeah. And he makes a phone call to, uh, to the dispatch, and he goes, he goes, man, this is embarrassing. And the call, the dispatcher accidentally messes up the call. Puts it out. Puts it out, but it's not, hey, this, it's, he, she puts out a code that, like, a cop's been shot. Uh-huh. So, like, a thousand cops show up. <laughs> and all and he's just, four, lock, all his buddies, just, yeah. he's just locked in yeah. there. And they all laughed, you know. Yeah. Can you imagine? Right. So, like, but when I read the description for that set of stories, yeah. it was like, hey, you ever been locked in something? I'm like, I don't know. I guess. But then you listen to those stories, like, oh, that's a that's a good story. It's good stories on this yeah. American life. So I dig that one. I also like uh, Joey Diaz, who's a comic. Is yeah, I know Joey Church of what's happening now. His stories are insane. I mean, he used to be heavy into drugs, car salesman, and car, all he's that. He's done you know, everything. Yeah. Prison. I've known Joey for a long time. He started in Denver, 
So yeah, that's right. He was yeah. a Denver guy. He was a Denver yeah. guy, yeah. And uh, I opened for him, this was when he was still heavy into drugs, but there was one time where just by happenstance, I opened for him three nights in a row at bar gigs in Southern California. Mm-hmm. All three times I had to go long because he was late. And they're like, just bring him up when he shows up. So three nights in a row, I bring him up. Yeah. After each one, I go up to him and I go, hey, man, it's great working with you. And each time, he has no idea who I am. And he thinks I'm an audience member because he goes, ah, oh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for support. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> but you would think after the third time, third night in a row, well, isn't it I'm amazing? bringing you up. <laughs> he he is such a nice man. He was nice then too. He, he's very he very he nice. Caught up in his but but if, you know especially if you're watching his uh, his periscopes. Have you ever seen any of his no, periscopes? No. Do, doing a J with you know Uncle Joey and I've you know, never watched. I he smokes watch. dope on the periscope. Like, I got some I got some bud here and I got some I'm gonna do I'm gonna eat this and then <laughs> and you can barely see him through the smoke on the periscope. I mean. <laughs> And I got a show tonight, and you got to come down, man. And we're gonna go sling some dick, and we're gonna, you know. He's so funny. He's just like, is he? Is he getting more and more wasted, or just? You know? Yeah, he and he's uh, he calls himself a sober guy because he doesn't do he doesn't drink, drink. Or, he doesn't drink or do coke anymore. Coke was his yeah. big thing, and I think he also tried heroin a few times. But now it's pot. It's, he is you like know, the king of pot. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's all about that. Yeah. Man. But I like his podcast. The stories that get told on his podcast are just... And I'm amazed that he actually knows some of the stuff. Like, uh, I was at this you know, like Deep Purple concert, and it was yeah. it was 1970, and he knows, he knows the date. He goes, don't believe me, Google. Yeah. You know, like, he's... It, He'll remember a hot dog place in the Bronx and give you the street. Yeah. He goes, like, I don't know if it's still there, but on 32nd, Mall, spe- yeah, whatever. He's given specifics, yeah. you know, a lot like, just like, one time I was at this thing, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's his story. So those are the two I recommend, and those two podcasts couldn't be further apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joey Diaz and then This American Life. Yeah. Yeah, go check those out. Um, What I was going to say about my, my wife's uh, murder podcast addiction is I, I think it's... Uh, I think it's rubbing off on her, though. She's becoming one of those ones that thinks it could happen to her. Now she's terrified. Yeah, she's ter- I don't. I don't know if this is happening to other people that are listening to him, but, you know, it's like, you know, I, this woman stopped at a, for gas on her way home from work, and they never saw her again. I'm never stopping for gas again. So now you have to gas up her yeah, car Yeah, you know, can you get out and gas up? Or, you know, she'll... She came home from the grocery store and remembered the jug of water was still in her car. When she went back out to the car, that was the last time her family ever saw her. God. You know. What are the odds of that? Because, what, there's 350 million people. I know, like, even if you gave her the stats, yeah. like, she still wouldn't be too comfortable with it. But yeah. 350 million people, how many people get murdered by some weird serial killer? Right. Yeah. Five a year? Six a year? Yeah. I don't know. How many get murdered by the two guys they just got let out of prison with their clear bag of oh, stuff? Oh, my God. I'm so glad they didn't. That's what I had in my mind. When those guys got on, I'm like, well, they don't want to go back to prison. Or do they? Or do they? <laughs> because, you know, here a lot of people are like, they can't fit back in. They, yeah, they but know it takes like a week or two. To get to yeah. go, like, I can't live out here anymore. <laughs> They've been out an hour. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping they wouldn't hit that point in the first five hours. Yeah, give it a, give it at least a week yeah, before yeah. they can't. Man, I can't live it out here yeah. with amongst all these people. Yeah, I need bars and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I was hoping like four was... Sc- four hots at a cot. You, you ever work Medford? No, uh. Uh-uh. Oh, okay, Medford was. You know how like when you travel and you work like a little small little podunk town, you kind of make fun of the town a oh, little yeah. bit, and then people dig it. Yeah. Medford was the one town that I worked where me telling them that their town sucked, but yeah. I was letting some big cat out of the bag. They're like, what are you talking about? They're that's, like, why no. we're, that's why we live here. Yeah, they're like, no, 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 Grant's Pass sucks. This doesn't suck. And I'm like, no, 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 Grant's Pass sucks too, but so do you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never make fun of the actual town. It has to be at least a suburb or a neighbor. The next, it's, the, it's always the next town over. Right, it's a, because Medford. May, Mar- Mayberry never made fun of Mount that's Pilot, true. you know. That's true. But yeah, they, I once went on uh, up in Grants Pass, which is just north of Medford. They have uh, river uh, high-speed river boats or whatever. Uh-huh. Like this, and uh, on the website, it's like take this educational tour around the Rogue River. And I like doing touristy stuff, so I'm like, yeah, I'll go do that. It was hot in the summer, and it's not. It's just like a water ride. You get into this thing, and this guy's got the headset, and he's just talking about the motor on the boat. We got a 385 Hemi with two, and then he like gives you a tour, but it's all about doing 360s that he's calling shake and bakes, and to get everyone wet. 
So he'll be on this tour. He's like, hey, man, this is the Rogue River. You see that bridge? It was built in 1898. All right. Shake and bake. And then he'd do a 360. <laughs> Everyone just wet. And then everybody goes, woo. And it was fun. But if you look at their website. It looks like it's it, a historical yeah, tour. It looks like some leisurely ride down the Rogue River. And it's not To bad. be educated about yeah. the, the well, foliage and the. Yeah, he's like, hey, there's a bald eagle. Take a picture. Cool, everyone. Woo, a picture. Shake and bake. Woo. One time, this uh, the little this little girl in the front got stung by a bee, and he, she started crying. He's like, "Oh no, what happened up there?" And like, stung by a bee, and then she's screaming for like a few minutes until it starts getting better. Yeah, and then he gets somber and quiet. He's like, "Oh no, hey, is she doing better up there?" And then you get the thumbs up. All right, shake and bake. <laughs> 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 it was, I laughed my ass off. And I actually had a great time. That's why I'm big on doing, like, nerdy tourist stuff. Yeah. Because that kind of stuff, where else? You're going to learn that on Wikipedia. Yeah, I would love to do, when I was down in New Orleans, they do a thing like the 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 scary New Orleans. We do a tour. Oh, that's awesome. Like I've never haunted been to New thing, Orleans. You know? I really want to go. Yeah. And I, I, those kind of things, like the same thing when I was up in, uh, working on a ship up in Boston, they do, like, the haunted Boston. You know, oh, they'll yeah, take you yeah, through yeah. The, the graveyard. I have done that. Have you done that? Yes. Because that's another one. Like I might do that sometime. Yeah, yeah. it's it, uh, the kind of it's not a part of it, but it's kind of like the Paul Revere tour uh-huh. where they give you like where he ran, and then you go to the different. Uh, then it went through like the graveyards and like what ghost is happening here. Yeah. I remember doing that. I really dug that. I like all that ghost stuff because you're into that. Yeah. Too. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I believe in that stuff. You yeah. Know? What ghost experiences have you had, or have you already talked about it on the podcast? Um, I believe I I believe I have, but I I. Uh, I can't remember, but the ghost experience that I did have um, actually involved, uh, I wish I could remember their names. You know, it's the couple that they do the conjuring. That's the real people. Oh, uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yeah. Yeah. They were, when I was working at the newspaper, they were there and, uh, and for an interview, and I told them this story that I had, and they were like, yeah, classic, cl- classic. That is, that is a, uh, yeah, a classic that was, spiritual yeah, thing. that was your grandfather. That's wow. what see the story was, and if you have if you have heard this, I apologize, but it's not it's new. Um, my, I, my grandfather was in a nursing home, and I was in his house because I was watching his ho- his home. I basically yeah. moved in because I, need, I needed a place to live too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the uh, I woke up. I felt you know something wakes you up, and I saw a presence in the doorway, like a, a like an image of a person, like a little white. Oh wow! And it kind of scared me, and I, you know, covered my like, ugh, covered myself up, and the alarm clock went off, and shut the alarm clock off. And, oh, was, yeah, <laughs> you know, kind of. And the alarm just went off. Yeah, on just off by itself. wasn't the right time. Just went off. Yeah. And the next morning, got up, and the alarm, uh, the uh, 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 old antique clock in the living room was running, and to, for it to run, you have to wind it, huh? and I hadn't. You hadn't done I that. hadn't done that. Wow. And uh, I'm getting goosebumps just, yeah, just telling, telling, telling the story. story. Yeah. And the, they were like, oh, yeah, that's classic. That was, uh, he passed through his, you know, his house. My grandfather had died yeah. at the nursing home. And then and he right passed, after that, he passed, passed through, his through the house. house. Wow. And uh, you know, they go, that's classic. And I told my mom that. And she goes, yeah, well, that's, don't ever tell your father. Because right. that was like, that yeah. was his, you know. That's scary. But I mean, at the same time, did you ever get a relationship with your grandfather? I did. I so did. It, it wasn't like a haunting. It was yeah, just yeah. kind it of It wasn't a, like a scary. It was just a... Uh, like... What's the word Like for a it? spirit came through the yeah, house. Yeah, An yeah, energy yeah. moved. Yeah. When they said that, that's what they said. The energy was what set off the, the clock. That's right. It's the energy. Yeah. The surge. As, as he was going. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, the only one I had wasn't even... Because I've never seen anything. So the first apartment I had, my best friend Dane and I moved out together. We had a little two-bedroom... Uh, place and I noticed every time I took a nap during the day, I'd get woken up by someone whispering my name in my ear. Zoltan, get up! You got to get up! You have to get up! And it happened every time I took a nap during the day, and I never told my buddy about it. And then we had moved out; our a year lease was up. I moved out, and then months later we were having drinks, and I just randomly told him that, and his eyes got all big. He goes, "You're shitting me!" And I go, "No!" And he goes, "The same thing happened to me." Every time I took a nap during the day, someone would wake me up saying my name in my ear, saying I got to get up. And he goes, on top of that, one time I woke up, and there was a lady standing in the doorway. Uh, she was a black lady with dreadlocks. And he goes, I got embarrassed because I thought you had a guest over. He thought it was someone I like I brought home. Yeah. And he's like pulled the covers up, and he looked back, and she was gone. And I was like, oh. 
Oh, so we had a ghost at the at the little two bedroom apartment. But yeah. That Did was, you ever look up the try to find the history or like what was in the building the, or who lived the there before? The apartment complex or? wasn't even that old, so that happened to us in two thousand five, so and the whole complex. Built like yeah, the complex had been built in ninety four, so it wasn't someone could have died in there. I yeah. mean, that's enough time for someone to die. Yeah, murder or something yeah, in there. Die or because they say murders are what makes things stay because they don't know they're that happened so quick that they are just sort of maybe that's what it was lost in. But she was, for some reason, this ghost is really against you sleeping during the day. Well, I can't sleep. Yeah. You can't either. It was never a nighttime thing. Never bugged us at night, or maybe we were too far into REM sleep to yeah. notice. But, uh, yeah, daytime sleep should always wake us yeah. up. My ex-wife, my, my third wife, uh, third wife, she told a story. She grew up in a plantation home, like oh, an, actual, God, yeah. an actual plantation home. Covered in ghosts. And yeah, and she said that they would see the ghost of a of a small child that oh. would run up and down the stairs or across the. And you could hear it too. Right yeah, it was there. a. And uh, I, I go, well, what's the deal? And she goes, apparently the the child had fallen into a fireplace and burned oh. burned to death in that house. What an awful way to die. Yeah, but yeah sudden, yeah, sudden death, and, and was, then you don't pass on to wherever you go. Yeah, because I said something about I'd always wanted a plantation. I love those. I'd love to own a plantation. And it's just. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. That's a lot of spirits. A lot of spirits. But it's and, a beautiful home. Aren't they? They're nice yeah. homes with colonial yeah. uh, like anti- those, antebellum columns. And the, what are those trees that like dangle down? They're like mossy almost. Oh, yeah. The, Whatever the hell those are called. I like those. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. I get you wanting to own one of yeah. those. I would, I would live in one of those if I could afford one. But I live in San Diego, so I've... I've uh, so I've you're come, just haunted by high rent. Yes. I've, I've been comfortable with the fact that I won't own anything here. You know, maybe if I move somewhere, I can buy some, but yeah. definitely not here. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, maybe Crank might need a roommate <laughs> now. Maybe you can get a good, good deal at a cabin. Go get a go get a Montana home. Yeah. I was thinking about that. Well, uh, my old boss at the uh, mechanic shop, I was hanging out with him, and he goes, "Well, why don't you just buy something in another state and don't live in it and rent it out?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's, that's not like a, a bad pos- idea. That's a possibility." Well, my dad is all he always was buying land. My dad would invest. Because a great investment. Because he said that's the one thing they can't make any more of. So uh, it didn't even matter yeah. if it was a, like it's it's a dollar and it's a, a thousand miles. Mo- Someday somebody's going to want yeah. it. Somebody's going to, you know, that's 10 miles outside of town. Right. That's almost swamp out there. Someday they'll... Yeah, because he said even if you make just 1% on it, yeah. it's still covering the mortgage and you're making a little money. Yeah. What's the problem? Or just buy property. Oh, just, yeah, with Just buy straight out it. nothing on it. Just like, oh, you know, just buy... That's another idea. Yeah, just buy 10 acres in Montana or whatever, you know. Maybe they want to build, like, a shopping center on it one day. One day. So you yeah. never know. What, yeah. what, what, when it starts, the cities start to get bigger. Sure. Then you're like, uh oh. I've seen some guys, seriously, in my, especially when I was at the radio station, that you're like, how did you afford this truck? Yeah, it's and, a big truck, yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. how did you... That is a that is a custom-built... Right. Yeah. I met this one guy that was could barely. He was like one of the guys from, uh, uh, wow, what was that cartoon with that? Bomb Bomb Howard, read over that kind of. Oh, King of the Hill. King of the Hill, one of those kind of. my truck. I've had this my thing my time. Yeah, but his family had owned land outside of uh, Denver for hundreds of years. Like it had been down, through, handed right, down right, through right. the, and they decided to sell it for a neighborhood. And, and he's a millionaire, that's Mil- awesome. millionaire. You know, just dirt goat farmer, basically. You know, yeah. just, we just had this property up here in the woods for you know. And then now people. And now it's a hillside community. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now it's a gated community. Yeah, and you're like, well, that explains that. There you go. That white tr- pearl white truck with gold trim. You know. <laughs> cool. That's what I'd get. I would get one of those uh, new Dodge Challengers. I think those are gorgeous. You seen those? No. Uh-uh. Oh, but yeah. they but they're going back to the retro kind of muscle car yeah, look to them. Yeah, it's got a beautiful look to it, and uh, I can't drive a stick shift, so I'd have to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have you on remasculate. I know you can't drive a stick shift. You know what? When I worked at the mechanic shop, my boss was like, "You're gonna learn, and every customer that has one, you're just gonna go drive it around." And that actually made it harder for me because they're all different. You know, like all the clutches. Some yeah. have more play. Some right. are like sports clutches. Or bah, bah, bah. Yeah, and. Maybe if I had taken one of those cars for a week and figured out exactly it, how to. But just messing around with it on a daily basis with different ones yeah. never got me in the groove. You never figured out the uh, 
They can hear the hear the chain. Ooh, no chain. Cha- no. And this is how the the guy that I worked for. He was so good. He could drive a manual without the clutch. He would change the gear off of feel. He's like, yeah, I can feel it in my hand, and he would switch gears uh, at the right time without ever touching the clutch. And I'm like, that's voodoo. I know. That's I don't even know yeah. about that's. I didn't know weird. you could. I didn't that. know you could do that. I thought you had to disengage to no. move it. You know. He, he, I guess if you do it at the right time with the right feel, you can get it in there it without ever right. having to touch the clutch. And I'm like. Yeah, dude, you do that, and I'm. It was like uh, when I was taking the boxing class, and like now I'm good at the speed bag at the boxing class. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> bop, bop, bop. I'm hitting that thing like well. But when I was first learning, I was like, I couldn't hit it twice to save my life. And I remember I was doing that, and some dude came by and did a spinning kick to the speed bag. Yeah, and that's what that reminded me of. Like I'm trying to learn stick shift, and he's over here shifting without the clutch, yeah. and I'm over here learning speed bag, and some guy does okay, like a just... tornado kick and hits it with his foot, and I'm like, get out of here, dude. <laughs> oh, the, you know, like that's for me. I quit. I'm yeah. done. Yeah, I don't need to. Yeah. I don't need to skill anyway. But all that being said, so if you want to get a Dodge Challenger, the ones that are automatics are you either have to get the lower base ones, which are V6s. Mm-hmm. But they still have 300 horsepower. But if you want a V8, that's a uh, automatic, you got to get the seventy thousand dollar Hellcat, which is like seven hundred and sixty something horsepower. I'd probably wrap it around a tree immediately, just pulling out of the dealership. <laughs> oh, there's the viral video. <laughs> oh, I haven't even had time to get it insured. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's the. I well, saw a video of that of some something very close to that. It says, "This is how to leave a car show." Have you ever seen that one? No. It's a souped up, just oh, souped up car with the with the air vent out of the yeah. hood. You know, the whole it's just chrome and, and it goes past the camera, and then you all these can't the camera starts running. You don't see what happens, but the camera starts running like half a block and it's running to a a brick fence. Oh. It's just like Jesus. Like, Oh, and you see the whole front end of this the super nice car that just went past you, just smashed. My boss used to say that. He goes, you know, now they make these sports cars with like six, 700 horsepower, but they don't teach you how to drive them. They just go, oh, you have enough money? Here are the keys. Yeah. Like, dude, you need to learn how to drive something like yeah, that. Yeah, you can't just punch the... Yeah. What was your car before this? A Honda Fit? Yeah. yeah. We're going up 650 horsepower here, all right? You're yeah. not prepared for what this thing's about to deliver. So, yeah, I'll probably wrap it around a tree if I ever make enough money to buy one, but I'll get well, one. That's of those. your goal. You have a, you have like a goal. I one of those. That'd be Every, cool. Everybody needs a life goal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, man, thanks for doing the uh, the podcast one more time. Absolutely. That was I'm glad great. we did a second round. It's always good. Uh, yeah. Zoltan part D. Part D. D. That, it, that is what it needs to be called. And on my flight home, I'll watch Hot Shot Hot, part, part D. D. Part D. Part D. <laughs> so, again, while we leave, tell them where to find you. on. It's, on. Zol- it's all Zoltan comedy. All the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Do you do, are all are you on all these on a regular basis? Oh yeah, Twitter. you update everyone every day or yeah. Know? Twitter, I tweet all the time. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, I'm on. I'm on those things regularly. Yeah. And if if you want to listen to my podcast, it's this week in Zoltan. It's available on iTunes and Spotify. I just I, I talk by myself. Are you I, are you I, daily, weekly, monthly, or weekly. just random? It's uh we- it's weekly unless I'm traveling. Yeah. And then so sometimes it's bi-weekly. Yeah, which I hear sometimes with your podcast, it's kind could of could be biweekly. Yeah, yeah, could yeah. be I've actually done two in a day in the past. You know, just oh, be wow. like I've had an idea and then I, oh oh I had one in the can. Oh, I'm gonna post them both. I, well, that's the cool thing about the medium. You there's no rules. Yeah, just whenever. But yeah, they always say you need structure. It's, it's supposed to be like I release it every Monday sure. at seven a.m. Or I a, it's a good way to keep an audience. But like the people that really listen, that are like fans, yeah. they'll come back. Well, if you subscribe, it's just going to pop into your thing, Absolutely. too. That's what I... I think people just uns, unsubscribe, though. Like, oh, I haven't had one in a week or two. I guess he's not doing it anymore. Yeah. I don't know if that's... The, but I've got people that I subscribe to that I've never taken off that haven't had a podcast in two years. Right. You know, like, maybe they're going to do... Maybe they're going to do another yeah. one. I don't want to miss maybe it. Maybe they'll get a wild hair. Yeah. Hey, I'm right. back. I got, you yeah. know, I got bored, but I'm back. Exactly. It could definitely happen. So, yeah. Uh, go listen to that. And it is, is it just you know. at your at your microphone? Yeah, you, it's just me. I uh, I kind of treat it like an open mic. Uh huh. And you I do tell, material. I tell stories, which okay. is what I do on stage anyway. But sometimes some of those stories end up on stage. Yeah. Like the um, I don't know, like the Louisiana uh, uh, Billings Louisville bit. Yeah, Billings was definitely on a podcast. Pretty much everything I've said, 
all the stories, the bombing stories. I probably recorded that so, the some point it, on your yeah the week it happened because <laughs> you got to get it yeah, off your I'm chest. Like, boy, did yeah. I just bomb in Penn State, Harrisburg. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. All right, cool. Well, yeah. guys, thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for downloading. You got to share it. You got to share podcasts. That's the only way they get out. So. Uh, like us, share us, go to iTunes, give it a good review, because if, re- if you give us a good rating and review on iTunes, it helps you move up. Do you remind people of that on yours? That, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, uh, what I do... Is there anything I'm missing that would help? Uh, this kind of helps. Okay. If, if uh, someone leaves you a five-star review yeah. and a comment, I read them in the opening buffer. <gasps> That would that be way, great. Yeah, that way people know that their voice is being heard. Yeah. Yeah. Leave a review, and, and I'll and, and I'll make you, it. Yeah, you yeah. read it, and you can riff off of it, and maybe yeah. there's a question. There I have a Google it. voice number that I post at the bottom. I probably should so start saying that in the thing. So they can, yeah, they can actually call, oh, cool. and, I, and, I, and if, I, if I get a good one, I've done this. Hey, I had a call from such and such, you know. Nice. I've done that. But people don't call like they, they used to. When I first got it, I got more calls. Interesting. And then people turned into more comments, or just like, well, comments, really like the podcast. Well, com- anytime there's just less clicks. So let's say you post this on Facebook. I yeah. can just leave a comment right here. Yeah. Or I have to call. And it's like an extra step. Yeah. People you don't want take- the extra yeah. step. I was here listening to talk radio the other day, uh, the Savage Nation. Yeah. And he was talking about how uh, talk radio in general has started to receive less callers. That used to be just that. massively. You call people just waited for hours. Yeah, and now their voice the, is being heard through all these different mediums. Yeah, and they now that this hunger. For yeah, it. they're they don't they can I can go right to Facebook and go yeah. Facebook Live. I don't need yeah. to wait on hold for an hour to tell you my opinion. Right, and then which actually on when I listen to radio shows, the Collins are my least favorite ones uh-huh. because it's sometimes it's people that aren't used to talking, and they're just like, hey, I just want to tell you I'm a big fan. Yeah, and um, I was earlier. In, uh, two segments ago, you were talking about, and then they just hang up on the guy because they're like, "Dude, spit it out! <laughs> <laughs> Write it down." Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, two segments ago, you said his name was Brian, but then you called him Bill. Was it Brian or Bill? Bill, because I'm confused. I've been a hole for an hour to find this out. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I could have gone without that. Yeah, you know? I can see that. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Uh, God bless America. Oh, I'm going to say this again because I, I actually had an email the other day that somebody said, why aren't you closing it with the, the old closer? So I guess with all the changes, I'm still going to have to keep the old closer, which is, thanks for listening. God bless America. Go listen to some Oak Ridge Boys. <laughs> I bid you adieu.